We're excited about our Moving Mountain series here in July, a heart healing journey, Fridays in July. Give somebody a hug or say what's up or give them a high five and tell them you're going to get something tonight. Let them know you're going to get something tonight. All right, kill the music there, Rebecca. 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 Kill the music, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Quick couple of announcements. Um, all right, so, so we got like a sneak preview of the, um, of the Burning Ones curriculum. Uh, if you go to revivallife.church, excuse me, revivallife.church forward slash Burning Ones, our, uh, our, our lessons are up. I think the first three are up. There's a fourth one that hasn't been posted yet. It's been recorded. And the worksheets are up. And so as part of the process, you're going to watch the videos, complete the worksheets, fill out the application, become a burning one. Uh, the application isn't up yet, but just because you're here, you get a sneak peek on how to get already started on it, right? Because you guys are advanced. I feel it in my spirit. Advanced. I'm looking forward to tonight. I think it's going to be really good. All right. So uh, who, who, does anybody need a handout? Does everybody have a handout? We need a handout right there. So go ahead and get one right there in the back of the room there. In the, <laughs> I don't know where they are. They're out there in the lobby. Can you bring one for the, the, the preacher's wife tonight? The, the teacher's wife, didn't, she didn't. Shaba, shaba. Do we, how many? There's no more copies or you need more copies? We need more copies? To overflow. I'm just staring at the person who said we probably had enough, and I said, let's do all of them. That's the ministry of condemnation. The church needs it restored. <laughs> we need a restoration of the ministry of condemnation. It's just all this grace and love these days. Not enough condemnation. I'm joking, of course. Uh, we're going to wait one minute while they go make a quick copy. But while we're waiting, I'm going to welcome up uh, Joshua Copcut. He's going to bring in our teaching tonight on hearing the voice of God. Give it up if you would, please. <laughs> Josh is a gift to the house. He's anointed. He hears God most of the time. I rarely have to tell him, no, that's the devil, Josh. Rebuke that. Rebuke that. No more than half the time do I have to, no, that's not true. 50%. No, no, it's 50, sometimes, no. But uh, Josh anointed. If you would stretch your hand, we're going to go ahead and uh, pray for him. Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for that anointing that you give teachers, Lord. Thank you for that, Lord, that, 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 that anointing that you give preachers, Father. Thank you for that anointing that you give prophets, Father. Thank you for that anointing that you give those who want to activate others, because that is your heart, Father. And we ask today, we ask today that you would be present. He's going to be doing a teaching, but you're going to be doing the activating. And so, Father, just as, just as uh, you took some of the spirit that was on Moses and put it on those 70 elders, Father, we pray that you would put a, a portion of that anointing that's on this teaching and put it on us tonight. And put on us this revelation in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that that anointing would flow in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. amen. Give it up for Josh. And if you need a uh, teaching, give a wave. Amen. So first off, I'm just going to pray. Uh, Holy Spirit, just do what you do, Lord. Amen. You so love to speak to us, Father. You so love to to just pour out your presence and your spirit. And Father, I just pray that you would just release your spirit right now over each and every person in this room, God. Holy Spirit, it's, it's you that we're here for. We're here to experience you, Father. So open our ears to hear you. Open our eyes to see you, Father. Father, I pray that as I speak, Father, that you would speak as well and speak even over me because we're here so that they can experience you and hear your voice, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So this lesson was originally about two hours. I will not make it two hours. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be about 30 minutes. So after that, we're going to do uh, some activation afterwards and just let God speak to us and, and write down what, what he's speaking. Amen. All right. So. Okay, so every believer is able to hear the voice of God. And so who does, who does God speak to? Is it for God's elect? Who does he, does he speak to 
the, the almighty prophet and no one else. He does speak to prophets, but he also spoke to Adam, who was the first sinner. He spoke to Saul, who, before he became Paul, killed, killed Christians before he ever did anything. And he became someone that ended up inspired by the Holy Spirit, writing 13 books of, our, of, the, of the New Testament. God speaks to everyone. Amen. And he loves to speak. He loves to talk to, talk to us, his sons and daughters. It says in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Each one of you is a sheep. If you know Jesus, if you've received Jesus, you are a sheep. Turn to your neighbor and tell them they're a sheep. Bye. <laughs> but if you're a sheep, you hear his voice, and you know him, and you follow him. Sometimes it may not be a booming noise or a booming voice, but you know what? You follow him. Psalm 139, 17 says, How precious to me are your thoughts about me, O God. They are innumerable. I can't even count them. They, are, they outnumber the grains of sand on the seashore. God loves to communicate. He spoke to us through his spirit, through the Bible, through creation, prophets, and through Jesus. God is the ultimate communicator. His plan from the very beginning, even in the garden, before sin, before anything, he created man. And what did he do? He walked with man in the cool of the day in the garden and just communed with us and just spoke with us. There is a yearning in each one of your hearts to hear his voice, and that can pull on his voice to speak. God's nature never changes. He's always in a good mood. So whether you're having the best day or you feel like, Today is just falling apart and is a mess. He will be there with open arms to meet you and just speak to you about his love and his goodness. God is so for us hearing. It talks about in several places throughout the Bible, Romans 12. It talks about the gifts of Jesus. It talks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of God. Each of these in Romans 12, it talks about prophecy. Romans, Corinthians, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 12 talks about prophecy as well. The gifts of God in Ephesians 4 talks about prophets equipping, equipping those who can raise up prophetic people. God wants to talk to you. Amen. So, what does God's voice sound like? It's the almighty boom out of the clouds. Well, no. Not, not, maybe not all the time. It says kind of describes it maybe a little bit in 1 Kings 19, 11 through 13. So he said, go forth and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord was passing by. And a great and strong wind was rending the mountains and breaking into pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a sound of a gentle blowing. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle, went out, and stood in the entrance of the cave. We imagine that when God speaks, it's unmistakable. Like I said, the booming voice from God, or maybe the handwriting on a wall. We assume that it, it's, it comes clearly with no shadow of a doubt, but sometimes God does speak to us in an audible voice. And what's funny is the one time I have actually heard, like, audible, like, how you're hearing me. But what's funny is even then, he spoke in a whisper. It was still a subtle, gentle, quiet voice that even though it's like you hearing me now, it was like a whisper. <laughs> I heard you, Mike. Sometimes we can miss the whisper if we're not waiting for it. God often whispers to us, so we have to lean in closer to hear him. He wants you to be attentive to our relationship with him. You know, thinking about it, it's the times when you're close. Like, you know, I'm just thinking like with the relationship with my wife, it's those times, the, the closer times when we're talking just, you know, here to there, just talking back and forth that it's those moments of, relationship that builds, the intimacy that builds, not like when you're on the phone, or, but it's when you're right there, 
that person is right next to you, up in front of you, that feels the most close and relation, intimate. Yeah. Yeah. There's three, three sources of thoughts. Thank you. One, it could be loving. It could be kind, inspiring, wise, healing. That, that'll be God. If it feels destructive, it feels negative, it feels condemning or confusing, it could be the enemy. But sometimes it's neither of those, and it's kind of confusing and difficult. But it, sometimes it's just logical and analytical, but that could just be us. We can tell the difference by the nature of the enemy versus the nature of the Holy Spirit when he speaks to us. We can feel it in our spirits. Yeah. So early in my walk, when I, f it was, it was, I can't even think of the first time, like when I first ex started experiencing the prophetic. I can't say it was like that moment, like boom, now you can hear God. But like there was no hands-on prayer. But I just started flowing and flowing, and it felt like a floodgate just opened. And I was receiving everything from everywhere, and I had no grid. I had nothing to contain it. But it felt so good to be able to feel like I was hearing something. I didn't even really think about it. I didn't think about where is this coming from? What is it? What is it, what is it ministering to? I was receiving these things from everywhere, and it didn't, I didn't have any kind of grid for it. Some words I was getting didn't point to Jesus, but were, edif were edifying myself as opposed to Jesus. Oh, wow. To me, the words sounded the same. I didn't know. Everything was just so exciting. I didn't really realize. So there's going to be four keys, four basic keys to hearing God's voice. And the main scripture is going to be Habakkuk 2, starting in verse 1 and then 2. I will stand on my guard post and station myself on the rampart. And I will keep watch to see what he will speak to me and how I may reply when I am reproved. Verse 2. Then the Lord answered me and said, Record the vision and inscribe it on tablets, that the one who reads it may run. So I'm going to read the four keys, and then I'm going to go into each one individually. The first key is going to be be still. Quiet yourself down. Two, look. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Look for his heart. Look for where he is, where he's moving in the room. Three, begin to hear and flow with his spirit. What is he ministering? How is he, how is he speaking? And then four, write it down. Just write. So key one, quiet yourself down. Psalm 46.10 says, be still and know that I am God. Some tips for, cult for cultivating just a quiet, just find a place, a comfortable place that you can rest, you can relax away from distractions or anything that can stress you out or bring you anxiety. But. And then, so when you go into worship, I don't know, like maybe like me, when I go into worship, I feel like I get this task list. I get these things, oh, I forgot to do the laundry. Oh, I forgot to, to pick up food from the grocery store. I forgot to do this, I for, forgot to do that. Keep a notepad by, nearby, write everything down. I think we could be the most productive people in the world. If we just wrote down everything the enemy tried to distract us with, we would be so productive. So productive. Like, thanks, devil, for reminding me I needed to take care of that laundry. <laughs> Sometimes it's thoughts of sin that can distract us. But honestly, if it's, if it's conviction, it's going to be the Holy Spirit. Just confess it and just release it. Amen. If it's condemnation, it's the enemy. Rebuke it and be done with it. Amen. Maybe sometimes your mind just wanders about. You can't seem to focus. Just fix your eyes on Jesus. Ask, say, Jesus, where are you in the room right now? What are you doing right now? And that'll fix your vision on him. Two, key two, fixing your eyes on Jesus. The Bible tells us to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, Hebrews 12, 2. 
So how do we do that? We use the eyes of our heart. The eyes of our heart are how we see spiritual things. So once you've found a quiet space, see where Jesus is in the room. See what he's doing. See how he's moving. Throughout the Bible, 90% of the Bible is narrative and 10% is pure theological instruction. There are 50 recorded dreams in the Bible and over 350 references to dreams, spiritual vision, spiritual eyes, looking in the spirit, and seers. Come on. Amen. God cares about dreams and speaking. You read them all, right? One. <laughs> yeah, this is not going to be two hours. Maybe in the two-hour version, I'll say them all. It's a good idea to learn from those if you haven't necessarily heard from God before. Learn from them. How did the prophets hear from God? Mo Moses provided some insight. Then he said, hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, the Lord may make known to him in a vision, and I speak to him in a dream. This is number, Numbers 12, 6. God is saying that he will speak through the images of dreams. So they actually saw something from God. The same idea occurs in the verses from Habakkuk. I will watch and see what he will speak to me. Watch and see what he is speaking to me. But that, but that was the prophets, so what about us? Luke answers that with a quote from the book of Joel. In the last day, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. This is Acts 2, 17. God wants to speak to all of us in visions and dreams. Come on. Come on. So how many of you can say you've ever had a vision, a dream, a picture from God? One or two? Like all things, the more you practice using the eyes of, eyes of your heart to receive vision from God, the easier it gets. It's a gift. It grows and it grows and builds. So key three, tuning to spontaneous flow. I found this kind of interesting how they originally labeled it spontaneous flow. Basically, just getting into the flow of the Holy Spirit, feeling his heart, experiencing his heart, connecting with him. If you, if you remember, our, the left portion of our brains is for, for logic and reason. The right side of our brain is more for creative. It's more like where the music and, and creativity side is. And that's also where, like, well, let me read it. To relax and get into the right brain mode, we can use music. Both Elisha and David found music to be helpful in hearing from the Lord. When Elisha was going out to war with the troops and needed guidance from the Lord, he said in 2 Kings 3.15, Now bring me a minstrel. And it came about when the minstrel played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. So quiet yourself down. Start with a picture of Jesus in your mind. Ask him a question. And it can be, it can be anything. Just begin the conversation. And just begin to write what he says. Don't try to analyze until you're finished. Just engage with your father's heart. And remember, all words from Jesus will edify, exhort, comf or bring comfort. They will never bring condemnation. Amen. They will never bring condemnation. Awesome. So sometimes there could be blocks in seeing in the spirit. Sometimes we can feel unworthy of receiving visions. Sometimes fear can get in the way. Because fe fear stops faith. Fear turns your eyes off of Jesus and onto yourself. Key four. So you're going to quiet yourself down. Start with the picture of Jesus in your mind. Ask him a question and write down the spontaneous thoughts. If you focus on something more than Jesus, the answer could get twisted. 
when you're done with your, your journaling and maybe you feel like something's off, you can more than always, you know, check that it lines up with the Bible. It'll, you, can, you can submit it to others. You can submit it to your friends. Say, hey, does this make sense? I was writing this and this kind of came up. Does this make sense? And they'll, and they'll share if it makes sense or it agrees. You can always bring, bring what you're journaling, what, you're, what, he's, what you feel like he spoke, and bring, it to, and bring it to spiritual authority to be checked. So just as a reminder, remember hearing God's thoughts is often like hearing our own. Yeah. They are often light and gentle. He usually speaks in the first person because he's talking to you. I love you or I hear you or I... I will help you. And usually God will speak through your personality and use your vocabulary. He created you. He knows how to speak to you. He knows your vocabulary. Amen. So when we do this time, I want you to remember, don't try to analyze what you're writing. I want you to just write and write and not think about it until we're done with the done with this time. Because once once you get that flow going, once you start the writing, it's just it's going to get easier and easier and easier. Instead of just trying to focus and try and figure out, well, what does this mean? Maybe does this make sense? Does this make sense at all? So some questions you can ask Jesus. Pretty simple, but what do you think about me? What do, you, what do you want to talk to me about today? That, that's such a big one. Like, God, what do you want to do today? What do you want to speak to me about? I'm listening. I'm ready. I'm just listening to what you'd like to speak to me today. Some of the other blocks could be idols, sometimes not even noticing in our own hearts. Eyes are only to be fixed on Jesus. So if you start fixing them on something else, for example, money or a brand new Porsche, then you could be in trouble. This is called praying through an idol. It says in Ezekiel, therefore speak to them and tell them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. When any Israelite sets up idols in his heart and puts a wicked stumbling block before his face and then goes to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him in keeping with his adultery. Or adultery. Idolatry, something different. <laughs> Ezekiel, both bad, both bad. Both bad yes. Uh, that was Ezekiel 14.4. If you come to God with an idol or an ungodly focus in your heart, that, will, that can affect the way that you perceive the answers that God speaks to you. In fact, he says he will answer you in keeping with or in court, according to the idol. An example of this may be in the story of Balaam in Numbers 22, 4 to 22. Balak, the king of Moab, um, wanted the prophet Balaam to go and curse the Israelites so he could defeat them. Balaam consulted the Lord, who said not to go, to the men, not to go with the messengers of Balak. But a short while later, God says to go with the next group of messengers. Well, why would God say one thing and then say something different in the next? He got angry the second time. Balaam followed through. Balaam is praying to God with an idol in his heart, possibly of money, power, or fame. Wow. Peter refers to this in 2 Peter 2.15. They have left the straight way and wandered off to follow the way of Balaam, son of Baor, who loved the wages of wickedness, but he was rebuked for his wrongdoing by a donkey. I do not want that happening. And that was 2 Peter 2.15. Balaam really wanted to go with them, but because he comes to God with his idol in his face, literally filling his vision, the answer he gets from God distorted the whole thing. This is why it's so important to keep your eyes and heart fixed on Jesus, as the, the flow of what you hear comes out of what you're fixed on. So if these things come up and, you know, God could say, hey, this thing is in your heart, it's distracting you, it's, it's, it's coloring the lens of how you're seeing things. Just repent and move on. It's that simple. It's not this huge process. So summary. 
quiet yourself down, fix your eyes on Jesus, tune to spontaneous flow, flow with his spirit, and write it down. Amen. So those were the four points. Well, next, what we're going to do uh, we're for the next about 30 minutes, uh, we're going to have our own time of encounter with God, journaling. Journaling. And then shortly about the end, if some, anyone feels like they have anything to share, we'll share. But we're going to play some music. We're going to put something on. Find a place that you can quiet yourself. Quiet yourself down. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Just begin to flow with him and then write down everything.